Well, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Well, a very good morning and welcome to our service here from St Peter Le Paul on this, our patronal festival. Uh, on Monday, it's the Feast of St Peter and St Paul, and so we're celebrating today our patron saint, St Peter. Our readings will reflect that, as will our prayers this morning. And it's lovely to have you if you're joining us perhaps for the first time online. You can find an order of service at www.stpeterlepore.org.uk and if you go to the weekly bulletin page you'll find the service order is there available for you to download and follow as we go through this morning's service. Let's pause for a moment before we come to confess our sins together. Jesus said to his apostles, You are my friends if you obey my commands. Let us now confess our disobedience to him. Lord Jesus, in your love you invite us to be your friends. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your joy you choose us to go out and bear fruit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, in your power, you send us to be your faithful witnesses. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, let us pray. Almighty God, who inspired your Apostle St Peter to confess Jesus as Christ and Son of the living God, build up your church upon this rock, that in unity and peace it may proclaim one truth and follow one Lord, your Son, our Saviour Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Well, Tim is going to read our first reading for us from Acts chapter 12. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About that time, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with the sword. After he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and handed him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was going to bring him out, Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him saying, get up quickly, and the chains fell off his wrists. The angel said to him, 
Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realise that what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane, when suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod, and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, our psalm this morning is Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that stands forever. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but stands fast forever. As the hills stand about Jerusalem, so the Lord stands round about his people from this time forth forevermore. <clears throat> Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that stands forever. The scepter of wickedness shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous turn their hands to evil. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that stands forever. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are true of heart. Those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord shall take away with the evil doers. But let there be peace upon Israel. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that stands forever. And our New Testament reading this morning is from 1 Peter. A reading from 1 Peter. For it is to your credit if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, where is the credit in that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not, suffer, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, the Lord be with you and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, 
You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray for a moment, shall we? Heavenly Father, as we come to your word this morning, as we reflect on the Apostle Peter and your dealings with him, so we pray that you might give us insight and understanding that his model of faith and service may be an encouragement and help to us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just for a few moments this morning, I want to go back to that passage from 1 Peter chapter 2, where Peter writes to the New Testament church about the difference that Christ makes in his service of him. Now, we need to remember as we begin to look at this passage that this is the same Peter writing here that was this bold and outspoken Peter of the Gospels. The Peter who uh, went ahead of anybody, who was fearless, it seemed, who was quick to open his mouth sometimes before he engaged his brain. Indeed, the Peter who was the first to confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. But we need to remember, too, that immediately after that Peter made that confession that Jesus was the Christ and Jesus explained that he had to suffer and be rejected and die, well, Peter would have none of it. Peter thought that he knew exactly the ministry that Jesus ought to have, and it wasn't a ministry of suffering and rejection and death. No, it was to be a triumphant ministry, achieved and enabled and helped by the strength and power and enthusiasm of his disciples, Peter being the chief of those. But here in 1 Peter, we see a different Peter, a Peter who has humbly learnt from the model and example of his saviour. A Peter whose example we too can follow and learn from this morning. Notice Peter is writing to a group of Christians who are struggling and suffering. He says to them, it's your credit. If you're being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. Now he's not talking about just unjust suffering because someone's accused them something that they haven't done and it's just a secular matter. He's talking about unjust suffering because of the name of Christ, because they're Christians, because they owned a Christian faith, because they spoke and lived for the Lord Jesus Christ. They had come under suffering. They were being persecuted for their faith. And Peter wanted them to see that perhaps the way he would have responded in the past was not the way to respond, given the example of his saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. So look with me, will you, at the passage and see three things, or two things at least, that we can learn uh, from Peter here. First of all, we notice that Peter has learned from the example of Christ's suffering. Look at verse 21. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. Jesus Christ's suffering. His rejection, uh, his crucifixion, his beating, and the way he responded to it are an example to us. Peter reminds us that we're not to decide ourselves how we respond to suffering, but we are instead to look to our Lord Jesus Christ and see the example that he has left us. Peter learnt the hard way that his instinctive and innate response to suffering <laughs> Uh, was not necessarily the one that his Messiah would choose and ask him to follow in. Peter used the way of violence and immediate response. Peter was the one who boldly said he'd stand up for Jesus, even go to his own death for Jesus, and yet who was found sadly lacking at the end. Jesus has taught Peter, and Peter has learnt that Christ's example is the one that he needs to follow in the face of suffering. 
And notice what Christ does, verse 23. Although he was utterly righteous, committed no sin, no deceit was found in his mouth. Now, what a reminder that it is our mouth that sin so often springs from. Our words are so important as much as our actions. But Jesus was innocent on both counts, actions and words. And yet he was abused, but he didn't return abuse. He physically suffered, he was beaten and whipped, but he did not threaten. Instead, he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Now, our world clamours for justice, and rightly so. But Peter knows that when it comes to injustice because we own the name of Christ, it may not matter how much we clamour for justice. Justice will only be delivered by our Heavenly Father at the last day. And Jesus is the example of the one who entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He didn't call out and ask the high priests and the Sanhedrin for justice because he knew he wouldn't receive it. Instead, he knew he had a father who would judge justly, who saw everything and who would call all to account. And so he's happy to be silent, to wait patiently under suffering, not to rail against it, because he knew there would be justice, even though it would be delayed. And so you and I, too, are to remember that when it comes to being persecuted for the name of Christ, the world around us will not understand the offence of that, the unrightness of that. Any appeal to justice that we make will often be ignored. Scores in the persecuted church have come to realise that. And instead of chosen this way of quiet submission to the one who judges justly, to the one whose judgment when Christ returns will be seen as utterly right when all that has been done as opposed to those who've been followers of Christ uh, will be brought to account. So Peter learned from the example of Christ's suffering. But notice also Peter learned too about the achievement of Christ's death. See how he goes on. Verse 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. You see, Peter wanted a way of triumph, not a way of suffering and defeat, the way of the cross. That was Peter's initial reaction, wasn't it, when Jesus said he had to suffer and die because he had a greater purpose, our salvation. Peter said, oh no, we can't have that. And of course, if Peter had had his way, you and I, well, we may have had an extended story of Jesus' teaching, but we would never had a story of a saviour. And Peter had come to realise that. He'd come to realise that the suffering and death that Jesus spoke about, that indeed he had to endure, was a suffering and death that would win for him salvation and forgiveness and eternal life. Jesus, the one who committed no sin, bore our sins in his body on the cross. The one who did not deserve to be judged was judged and condemned in our place. And because of that, the sin that we should rightly bear, the sin whose judgment we should rightly face, well, we can instead live for righteousness. It is not by our wounds that we have been healed, not by our efforts that somehow we will impress God, but by his wounds that we have been healed. Peter had come to realise the achievement of Christ's death. To him, initially, when he recognised that Jesus was the Messiah, it was an empty and pointless death that didn't fulfil his idea of a Messiah's mission. But he'd come to realise in later life that it was a death that achieved everything, a death that he could not do without, and indeed a death that we cannot do without either. But thirdly, notice the confidence of Christ's sheep. Peter was the one who was talked to by Jesus after his resurrection. Jesus asked him three questions. Three questions that expose Peter's weakness and his failings. And three questions that also expose Jesus' tender love for the one he would make the leader of the church. The one who would have the responsibility for feeding his sheep. And Peter, as the great under-shepherd to the great shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, knows what it means to be a sheep that has gone astray, brought home, back into the fold of his master. Look what he writes. For you were going astray, like sheep, 
but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. See, that was Peter's confidence. He was stubborn, he was wayward, he was a sheep that was lost. But wonderfully, through the initiative and through the choice of the Lord Jesus Christ, he was brought back into his fold. And Peter knows that great assurance, that great hope of eternal life because of the great shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. And he invites those he writes to here to share in that great assurance and confidence that whilst we may be wayward sheep, stubborn, rebellious, if we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who suffered unjustly, but entrusted himself to him who judges justly, the one who committed no sin and yet bore our sin on the tree, well, we come to the one who's able to bring forgiveness, the one who's able to restore us to the flock of God, the one who's able to ensure an eternal future for us with him. Let's pray, shall we? Thanking God for his goodness to us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your ministry to Peter. Thank you that he, as a wayward sheep, was brought back into your fold. That the one he thought couldn't possibly die for him, yet still did die, that he might be brought in. And we thank you for the lessons of humility and service that Peter learnt. And we pray that we may learn them too. That in our stubbornness and waywardness, you would help us to be those who, for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ, are prepared to bear suffering quietly, entrusting ourselves to the one who judges justly, confident that we were once sheep who had gone astray, but are now sheep who are safely returned to your fold. We ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. And so we declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. And we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. And we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, our prayers this morning are led by James. Encouraged by our fellowship with all the saints, let us make our prayers to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, your Son called men and women to leave the past behind them and to follow him as his disciples in the way of the cross. Look with mercy upon those whom he calls today, marks with the cross and makes his disciples within the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son told his disciples not to be afraid, and at Easter breathed on them his gift of peace. Look with mercy upon the world into which he sent them out, and give it that peace for which it longs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son formed around him a company who were no longer servants but friends, and he called all those who obeyed him his brother and sister and mother. Look with mercy upon our families and our friends, and upon the communities in which we share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son sent out disciples to preach and heal the sick. 
look with mercy on all those who yearn to hear the good news of salvation and renew among your people the gifts of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son promised to those who followed him that they would sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel and would share the banquet of the kingdom. According to your promise, look with mercy on those who have walked with Christ in this life and now have passed through death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. So join us together in unity of spirit by their doctrine, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and to those who were near. And so may the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good that we should give you thanks, praise and glory, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For after his resurrection, he sent out his apostles and evangelists to preach the gospel to all nations, and lead us in the way of truth. Himself the chief cornerstone, he founded his church upon the apostles, firmly to stand forever as a sign of your holiness upon earth, and a living witness to all of the way that leads to heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we lift our voices and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Well, hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Well, great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
and therefore lord and heavenly father in remembrance of the precious death and passion the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear son jesus christ we offer you through him this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion and although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice yet we pray that you will accept this the duty and service that we owe do not weigh our merits but pardon our offences and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing through jesus christ our lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory be yours almighty father for ever and ever amen and so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And so let us pray. Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit to the apostles with the wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. By the power of the same Spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us 
so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Uh, we have, as normal, our after-service uh, coffee on Zoom. That's at uh, 12 noon, and the details are on the order of service that you can download from the church website. Uh, those of you in the church family will know about uh, the afternoon uh, celebration tea for our patronal festival today. Uh, if you haven't had the email and want more detail to that, please be, do, be in contact with me by email or phone. Uh, and we'd love to get you a space at that. Uh, and also to say that uh, as we begin, because of the government's relaxation in regulations, uh, to be able to use the church building again, albeit in a very limited way, uh, for the first time this afternoon, between two and four, we're hoping to open the church for private prayer. It is simply for private prayer, uh, but it will be open from two to four. And we hope to repeat that uh, at least once during the week uh, and on the weekends going forward. And there'll be more news too about when it is that we can start beginning to have services back in the church building uh, with all the restrictions that that will involve. But for today, let's finish with our final prayer and blessing. God, who has prepared for you a city with eternal foundations, bring you with Peter and all the saints to the eternal and triumphant joy of that city. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.